ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري والحل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اما بعد السلام عليكم everyone so today's <coughs> As we all know that today's main objective of this session is Tafsir versus Tadabur, lenses to contemplate the Quran, the steps for Quran contemplation, Tadabur on Surah Al-Fatiha, and understanding the meaning of the ayah. The concept, the idea behind this program, the Quran week, which we actually, we started last week in which we have students from across the globe. And uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, I am trying to do different surah every week is to actually help our Muslim sisters around the world to begin to con contemplate the Quran and understand the words of Allah directly. We all know that we should be thinking, understanding, and contemplating the Quran but for most of us we don't know that what's the first step or what's uh, the first approach to do or how do we even do that how to engage, engage with the Quran however being Muslim we just read the Quran but it leaves us blank when we try to understand the Quran when we try to understand the meaning of the Quran it it, it makes us it starts uh, we start skipping that part and now by skipping those parts we start creating gaps between that between the connection what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say and his servant that is us so the part of this program is to bridge the gap and to help each one of us including myself that how beautiful and rich in the word of Allah, how beautiful and rich is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the session timing as you all know is around like 90 minutes i know it sounds kind of like a lot of timing but uh, we will try to complete uh, before that uh, because uh, we missed our last session like uh, on saturday we, we were supposed to have our class but due to some technical issues um now we were unable to take the class uh, so here we you get uh, will get a 10 minute breaks uh, you can go have your coffee chai or green tea whatever you want and inshallah then we'll continue uh, I won't be harsh on you uh, that uh, you just have to sit here or you know uh, just uh, um, go through the slides and just uh, listen what I'm saying so inshallah um, uh, <clears throat> the two goals of this week uh, Quran session is uh, the primary goal of this week is Tadabur Tadabur on Surah Al-Fatiha Tafsir versus Tadabur and five lenses to contemplate the Quran and what's the importance of contempl contemplation which means that what are the five things we are we have to focus why uh, we contemplate the quran what does the book or deep contemplation means so subhanallah um, Allah in the Quran didn't say that thinking deeply or contemplating deeply is an extracurricular activity for us. We know that um, there are five prayers which are necessary, which are obligatory on us, and we cannot compromise on that. Something which are haram, which are forbidden in Islam, and we, we cannot com compromise on that. Similarly, we have uh, five pillars of Islam. Uh, we, we, ha we know about these basic things of Islam. But what about the Dabur? Do we even know what really tadabur is? Tadabur of the Quran or contemplating or thinking deeply about the Quran is actually what something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands us in the Quran and complains when people don't do it. It's not something light. We should not take, we should not neglect it. We should not take it something lightly because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran twice. He mentioned this twice. Afala al-Quran. Don't they even think deeply about the Quran? He also said that uh, he sent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 
this book what which book the quran for guidance as we all know to show us the straight path ihdina siratal mustaqim iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in so so that um we cannot uh, forget uh, the main purpose of life the main goal that is we have to meet subhanallah on the day of judgment to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't you don't you really want to meet and see our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam don't you want to really meet him don't you do you do you really want to meet um, um hazrat aisha uh, um khadija see so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this book as a guidance everybody knows that uh, it is a book of guidance but another place but they don't really know how we should contemplate on it how we should apply it into our life subhanallah um, there is another verse in the quran where allah mentions that anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi a book was sent down to you full of blessings for the goal that they should contemplate its ayah they should think deeply about this ayah so the fact that you you and i today have the fact we should focus more we have to think that the ayah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what was the purpose of this ayah we have to deeply engage in it contemplate it actually what is the main goal of our class so um um we all know that when somebody says that i am learning quran or my child is learning quran or today you are here you are chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, my sisters uh, you are those uh, beautiful flowers chosen from um, billions of uh, flowers but allah picked you allah brought you here for some reason he chose you because he loved you he wanted that you want you should get closer to him now it's our duty he he showed us the path he showed us the light now it's our duty to reach to him when somebody says that i am learning quran or my child is learning quran you know what the, what does that mean they think that they are memorizing the quran they are learning the quran or they are learning the tajweed they're uh, they're trying to pronounce it or sound it that what do they mean that this is their learning of quran unfortunately this is not what learning of quran is so what is learning of quran so um as we all know 1400 years ago when the quran came down nobody called uh, that learning the tajweed learning uh, the soundings learning the quran learning the ayah is the um, that's what really is the uh, like that's what's the goal that's the tajweed or the sounding the pronunciation everything that's the only goal of learning the quran no when someone was learning 100 years ago like 1400 years ago the quran they were pondering upon it they were pondering upon the quran they were pondering upon the ayah they were thinking about the quran they were trying to understand its meaning they were trying to say think about and contemplate about this that what allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say and what does he want from us what he wants us to do for him so they used to think it twice twice how they used to go into the depth of this ayah so now as i have given you a brief or short introduction that what's the purpose or what's the goal of our class now i want you to make a clear understanding a clear concept between these two words why tafsir and what is tafsir versus tadabbur right what will happen when we remove tafsir uh, from tadabbur or tadabbur from tafsir what impact will will it have so tafsir is uh, basically am i understanding the ayah correctly what do the words of allah do do i know anything about when the ayah was given to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the context of the ayah is it being translated or described correctly is my understanding or the lesson i'm supposed to get from it am i getting that correctly that is tafsir tafsir work uh, was done by our scholars which um, many scholars have done uh, work on this uh, concept that the on tafsir centuries and centuries ago it's a very 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 huge concept it's a very big word you can say tafsir but sometimes there is also a debate in tafsir inshallah we'll see that too uh, when we'll study um, particularly those ayah where we will uh, we'll find relevant uh, like to discuss it 
um, because you know I have uh, being a person of knowledge I'm also holding myself back not to confuse you with a lot of knowledge just to uh, bombard you with questions or terms or um, some terms which are not familiar to you so this session that's also the purpose of uh, that uh, my sisters who joined uh, me from across the globe alhamdulillah I'm so grateful that people are joining me and they are trying to understand uh, they're trying to learn they're giving their precious time to me and even uh, they're getting out of it and subhanallah Allah is also rewarding me and them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our intentions so so for most part of seer is basically a research based you have to do research what does this word mean what does this ayah mean how does the companions of understand it the story behind the seer what uh, behind this ayah particular ayah so who is mufassir mufassir is the person who writes the seer um a person who writes the seer uh, who had so they had uh, these mufassir what they used to do earlier these scholars when they used to write the seer uh, they had a few questions going on in their mind and in front of them they um, uh, when they get the answers to the those questions they used to move to the next ayah that that's uh, what they used to do so when they used to uh, so before moving to the next ayah, what were these basic questions they used to get? So they were, what does the ayah mean? When was it revealed? What did uh, early scholars or companions say about it? And what did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say? Uh, th something about this. Um, there are a few questions uh, here which I have mentioned, and then they used to move on next ayah. So Subhanallah, when you walk through uh, uh, a tafsir library, uh, there is a very beautiful library in Scotland. Uh, you should visit that place. It's not a promotion here, but yeah, Inshallah, I'm also planning uh, one day I'll um, go and see that library. It's a very huge library. Subhanallah, you can also Google it. Um, it's so beautiful. You'll find that um, uh, walking through tafsir library uh, will make you feel that you are going to a literature department library. Uh, under each category, you will find different books, but uh, there is a kind of similar genre. There are different kinds of tafsir, different specializations of tafsir. Uh, for example, I would say tafsir bil uh, mahsur, tafsir bil lawi, tafsir al adabi, tafsir al ishari, um, many more. And on each one of them, there are multiple people who did lots and lots of work in each category. So, tafsir is a big word, you can say. Uh, at the end uh, uh, of this um, session, inshallah, I'll try to explain you more and elaborate more on this uh, tafsir uh, concept. But uh, yeah, you can say that tafsir indeed is a big word. Um, at the end of it, so there are scholars, uh, they try to explain uh, through tafsir, they try to explain uh, through tafsir uh, the very deep concept of. Uh, or you can say very hard meaning into their own words you can say and what lessons should be and they try to explain it in their own words uh, and they try to explain what lessons of uh, the ayah in simple language so tafsir how is this uh, one important to us in our life so that i have already mentioned in our previous class why tafsir and what's the purpose purpose of tafsir and how many types of tafsir are there so here i'm not focusing more on this this uh, uh this was also a kind of um brief uh, sorry not a brief uh, a long concept but i've described i've uh, tried to be precise and short uh, within uh, the time limit i've been given so tadabur tadabur uh, what does tadabur means now what is tadabur so tadabur tadabur is uh, what does really tadabur means tadabur means um pondering thinking contemplation what in the word tadabur means now i know tafsir okay i am a person a person of knowledge a person who has ilm so what do i do with that ilm now where do i apply it is getting ilm or knowledge enough for us in order to become a doctor is studying uh, uh, anatomy or uh, you know uh, physiology enough for you just to uh, operate a surgeon no where will you apply that knowledge you have to you have in order to um, do a surgery you have to you 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 have to study properly um, physiology anatomy and many more things 
So here, similarly, in order to understand the sin, we should why the in order to uh, apply the dabur in our life, we have to learn tafsir, and without tafsir, there is no dabur, and without the dabur, there is no tafsir. Okay, I'll ex I'll explain to you very like I'll try to explain you with a few more examples. Um, it will be fun. So, um, I would say that uh, uh, when you get tafsir, like when you get ilm, when you get knowledge, now you'll be like, okay, I got this knowledge. I got I have read this surah. For example, today we'll study surah al fatiha So today I read surah al fatiha What does this surah teach me? What do I? What lesson do I take it uh, from me today? From? What, uh, what, how will I apply this uh, in our, in my life? So the basic concept is how uh, does uh, it change my view of the world? In the words there is, the, so in other words, I could say that the fear is um, something, um, there is information and when there is the impact of that information, that becomes the point, the impact. So when you have ilm, that is tafsir, and when you apply that into your life, that is the dhabur. Obviously, contemplation, with contemplation. Tafsir will give you information. Well, the dhabur is basically an exercise. How is it impacting my heart? How is it changing the view of my world? How is it supposed to change my emotions or opinions? Because um, uh, these ayats are talking, because they're ayats which are talking about what happened uh, something uh, 100 years or 1400 years ago, which happened. And even, in fact, they're happening it right now. Um, that's happening. So that's to the book. So the very big problem I would say today is um, Mufassir, when they, you know, they do tafsir, they know proper knowledge. Obviously, uh, they are familiar with uh, really uh, about this particular ayah or surah. So they be like, oh, okay, I'm done. I know tafsir. Now, uh, I'll also apply that to the I also know the No, but unfortunately, you have locked your heart. The dabur is the way to unlock your heart. So here, what do we do? Um, in order to understand, when a person learns the seer, it's not that uh, it's not enough that he ha he or she have learned the dabur. So when people doing the dabur, people be like. You hey you are just te uh, teaching tafsir and you are just uh, going through the ayah and you're just making a, explain you are not connecting uh, this to our hearts or you are not connecting uh, these words to Allah so these words are not connecting to Allah subhanahu wa taala so the person who is uh, going to do the tadabbur will say okay I'm good at, I'm gonna do this tadabbur by myself uh, and then no need of tafsir but uh, now again you you are also not, you are also doing that wrong. So uh, that's the biggest disaster. What these days uh, the Ummah is doing, reading the seer uh, doesn't mean that you already did the dabur, and people who do the dabur doesn't mean they have already done the seer. So that's a very different concept. So combination of the seer, inshallah, will try to explain um, these ayah with the combination of these two two terms. That is the seer versus will take the seer along with the dabur, inshallah, in our series. Uh, so inshallah, what surah are we going to study today? We are going to study surah al-fatiha. So they are approach to study the Quran. So for me, my approach to study the Quran for me is a fusion between tafsir and tadabur this approach thing is the fusion between tafsir and tadabur uh, so here i have my own method of studying this inshallah you'll soon see that in my upcoming sessions the method how i teach or uh, how is the way of approach uh, the approach of taking a particular ayah and how i reflect upon it so we'll we'll also know that so as we all know that there are maki surah in the Quran, uh, one of them is Surah Al-Fatiha. So, what does really a Makti Surah mean? So, people will say, okay, uh, so this Surah are, the main subject of this Surah is, uh, they talk about Allah, His signs of this creation, um, the previous nation that were destroyed uh, when they disobeyed Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, uh, the stories of our Prophet, the judgment, the he hell and heaven, obviously. So, um, as we all know, Juzi Amma contains most uh, Makki Surah, Surah Najm, Surah Fatiha, Surah Naba, and many more Surah. So, when people read particular Surah, and when now, 
you'll find that uh, uh, these sura, uh, for example, today you read Surah Naba and you read Surah Najm. Um, you'll find similar uh, terms like creation of Allah and you'll find like, um, uh, you'll find um, that uh, the discussion Allah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described about the day of judgment, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described um, the, uh, the signs of his creation, the creator. Uh, so, so you'll be like, okay, I have read this. There is no need to read Surah Najm, or uh, uh, if you read Surah Najm, there is no need to read Surah Naba. If you have you read Surah Naba, you there is no need to uh, read Surah Najm. But no, here you are doing a very, very, very wrong thing. So as we all know, the genetic sequence essentially the fun is the fundamental component of our genome, um, of our genome, which are saying. It's just uh, what uh, its rearrangement uh, makes us a different human being. Obviously, there is an exception, uh, identical twins, or that's obviously Subhan Allah's beauty. Uh, Allah's uh, uh, the creator of this creation is Subhanallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is so you see how beautifully He created this creation, right? So that's the beauty we have to focus on. So as we all know. Uh, so, for example, in the class, uh, there are five students. You give them Legos, a bucket of Legos, you know. Legos means um, um, they fix those blocks. For example, yellow, blue, and red. So all of them have these same buckets. And you say them, okay, create something out of it, uh, something new. And um, the one who creates uh, very best uh, will get rewarded, like awarded. So student will put their own creativity while creating or adding those blocks so that's what every human being has their own mind every human being have their own creativity for example you visit a historical place you visit um uh, uh, for example you go to uae burj khalifa in india you go to taj mahal Qutub minar or many more places you'll see when you see these historical building you'll be you you'll be you'll you'll be in a psyche of oil you you'll be like subhanallah wow that's so beautiful you you praise that you appreciate that right you'll be like wow what a mind what a creativity you'll not be like hey okay this Qutub minar has a brick which uh, also contains the same brick at my home you'll start judging that uh, brand to your homes no that does not really work that does not work so for me so subhanallah everyone has their own creativity and subhanallah indeed allah is the best creator of this creation that's how we have to focus on so when he here i'm trying to explain what i'm trying to explain you that everything has a unique identity a unique divine a unique artistic ex expression a unique beauty and if you don't come with an attitude and with an attitude, um, with the uh, tadabur, you'll mess up. You'll mess up. You'll really, you'll don't appreciate. You won't appreciate. You won't praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Here, the doors of tadabur gets locked when you don't come with this uh, attitude of learning. When you don't come with this attitude of contemplating. When you don't come with this attitude, uh, attitude of um, you know. Uh, like uh, you know nothing you are trying you came here to learn something new and out of that you you what lesson did you take from that uh, so that's really it, it opens your heart it, it, it's a way to unlock your heart so here i'll try to give an, another example so you know um i believe so that here mubasir uh, they have a good alhamdulillah like obviously they mashallah they have um a good uh, approach a good knowledge of uh, tafsir but there is something missing in that approach what is that that is the double how okay i'll explain you that um now i guess you'll understand this concept very easily that quran's each surah is a perfect gift sent from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each one of them is a unique gift unique gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no surah of the quran is extra do you believe that okay for example i'll say you have one hand you have two hands and you'll be like okay perfect no no worries if allah don't give me one hand i can work no that doesn't work uh, allah gave you one eye 
do you think uh, uh, okay that that will work when i will work but you will face difficulties so that's not that's why um, when you read a makki surah do not think that uh, okay now this is a makki surah allah will mention that's a repetence allah will repeat this in english uh, literature we mean that it's here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is re repeating and reminding us again and again and again the day uh, regarding the day of judgment what what's the purpose of our life and how what we have to do in this world and how this world is temporary and why is the uh, world of hereafter is uh, uh, you know um uh, forever living you know what's the goal of our life the pro uh, and he also gave references the stories of our prophet so that we can understand it very beautifully see how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that how to understand it that's where we miss the double and when we miss the double it's very difficult to understand we just to, when to understand the seer to, to apply that into our life may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, choose us and make among us uh, his uh, uh, obedient servants so so in here scholars uh, they when you will go through several tafsir books uh, you'll see that uh, they write that we have already already talked about this now uh, you can um, you can go through this uh, on on that page and we have already talked about this and here mufassir also miss this concept of the double why they didn't explain it again because why why is that uh, because uh, I would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is I, obviously there is something there is a reason there is a purpose of every surah that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have kept uh, them in the Quran every surah have its own meaning have its own unique identity its own divine its unique divine artistic expression subhanallah see how we have to focus so here I'm, I'm trying to explain when tadabbur becomes when you miss tadabbur you you stop you 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 close the door of um you close the door of uh, praising allah you close that you unlock your you lock your heart you don't you close the door of understanding tafsir in order to understand tafsir you should have the double in your heart so see that's a, a very deep science but uh, that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions uh twice in the quran as i mentioned uh, in the earlier um, slide that uh, 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 that afala yatadabbarun alquran so here my approach uh, of um, making you understand or making you learn or make or talking about this concept was very essential in today's session i know it will be kind of long session today but uh, it was to explain you all why it is very important for us to have a pure intention in our heart when you don't have intention subhanallah in every uh, uh, hadith bukhari is for example uh, say uh, bukhari sharif whether it's uh, mishkat sharif whether it's uh, uh, whether it's um, you know so in these books you'll find first uh, hadith that is al niyat. why niyat? Bin niyat all deeds depends upon your intentions so here today allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you that you come and join this session on the basis of your niyat. on the that today allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are one of those beautiful flowers chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join this session to connect to him to connect to his word and the way of approach how you approach and connect to him through through having tadabbur in your heart and to learn the words of allah to understand its meaning subhanallah won't you feel so happy that allah chose you obviously you will so so here when i approach um uh, <clears throat> so what are the lenses to contemplate the quran so there are for me uh, i've mentioned here four lenses uh, for you all but fifth one is for my personal approach so here are the first personal connection spiritual growth and obviously um, in the next slide we'll uh, talk about the third and fourth so personal connection is the tadabur fosters upon personal connection between the reader and the quran 
right? And the spiritual, it promotes spiritual growth, self-improvement, a deeper understanding of one's faith, one's religion about how beautiful Islam is. What does this teach about? What does this particular ayah teach today? From, and what we should take it uh, at home with us and how we should apply that into our lives. SubhanAllah, once you try to do that, once you try to apply to the book in your life, SubhanAllah, see how your life will change. So when I approach, um, when I approach Quran, so here that's my approach. Uh, the door, uh, when uh, when I approach the door, the entrance of every surah, um, I want to be in an awe. I want to be have uh, in a reverence. That uh, when you, for example, you see a beautiful building, you just praise the architecture, right? You you say, wow, such a creative mind. Wow, such a beautiful building okay so you don't praise the bricks you don't praise the roof you don't praise uh, you don't appreciate the roof or you don't praise um, the walls or you know the doors or whatever stuff you see there you just uh, you just appreciate you just appreciate um, how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for example when you see the beauty of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creation of this of the creator you praise him you say subhanallah what does that mean? You just know, you just say, the word comes out of your mouth. And when it comes with an intention, with a pure intention, that's where the, the, the book, intention, contemplation, thinking, everything you think, we indeed, we came from Allah and we will return to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Or you can say, Kullu nafsin maut. Indeed, we came from Allah and we will return to Him every soul shall taste that we have to remind ourselves on our daily basis that indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for the purpose of what's the purpose of life it's not eat sleep have a goal or be a doctor i know being a doctor or i'm not uh, commenting on any profession yes you can be a doctor but what if you remove that goal worshiping allah obeying allah that's the purpose of life ends what if you become a doctor then what's uh, if you make the goal uh, the primary goal of being a doctor what you if you achieve that goal and uh, what next what are you going to do next okay you'll be uh, 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 tell me one person they who never died no one you won't you don't have an answer who never died everyone will die and what after that that's the test that's the actually actual test we have to pass May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. That's why we have to ask that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, Allah may me a jannah. We, we should seek jannah, jannah to for those. We should seek ease. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy for us and reward us the best in both worlds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us on the basis of our intentions as well. Uh, we should seek mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See how beautiful, when we, in, inshallah soon, when you come to know um, several ayahs in the Quran, when I try to explain you, subhanallah, you will try to reflect upon it, you will try to ponder those ayahs, then you'll think, what's the purpose of life? You'll try, you'll literally have cry, you'll literally have tears in your eyes. You'll be like, what What was I doing? Uh, to, uh, what was I doing since uh, 20 years uh, or maybe 18 years or 15 years? Why? It's never too late, my sisters or brothers. Uh, return back to Allah before you return to Him. Please return back to Allah. That's the goal. Indeed, don't you want to see our Prophet Muhammad on the Day of Judgment? SubhanAllah. He gave so much. He, he, his last word. Can you not imagine his last word? Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. Why? He's so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everywhere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions who loves Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who love me. I love him. In order to get closer to Allah, love our Prophet. Why? We cannot. It's not a rocket science. How many things are haram or halal in our life? Few things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just say, uh, told us to forbid. Uh, forbid us in Islam. For, it's, it's just because of for the benefit. Of, he loves us. For example, drinking is prohibited in Islam. Because obviously uh, science also proved that it it ruins our health. Why don't we are and see how? Okay, uh, how many things uh, you can like mention or write down in the comment section or uh, mention that how many things uh, you can think 
Allah forbid, uh, for have for forbidden for us. Few things. There's not a huge list. When you try, and how many things are halal? Subhanallah. Shahi tukra, chicken, paneer, mutton, chick, mutton tikka, biryani, and many more. I don't have the list of sushi or Chinese food or Indian food or uh, American food. Obviously, I don't know. I don't even know the names. Subhanallah. And just imagine, you'll get rewarded because you stopped yourself from uh, in this dunya from drink, drinking and Allah rewarded you with a very, very, very good blessing waiting for you in the Akhira. That is a river which, which will be where you, you can drink wine a beautiful which will have a very beautiful smell inshallah we'll discuss that in the quran it's mentioned very beautifully so we focus on more on negatives that's a human nature here we focus more on hey why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always being rude to us that if you don't obey me you'll go to hell why don't you focus that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned in the quran that if you follow me you'll get this reward and indeed the reward is you can't even imagine you can't even imagine subhanallah why are you focusing on the negative because obviously if he won't tell you the uh, if i won't tell you the disadvantages of uh, this uh, particular for example uh, uh, of eating pork if i don't tell you you will eat that and obviously it will ruin, ruin your health you'll get um, you'll fall ill you have to visit you have to consult a doctor right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already telling us, is already warning us. Then why why we have locked our heart? It's because the dabbo is missing within our heart. The contemplation, the deep understanding of the Quran, that's missing. That's the block. That's the bridge we have to build between this in order to uh, approach the Quran. So when I approach the door, the entrance of the surah, I want you all to be, in, including myself, in an awe that I want to have reference. I am entering something divine. I am entering that traveled through seven heavens. I am not here to provide you a lot of uh, terms from tafsir. Obviously, you all have tafsir at your home, but that uh, obviously probably uh, obviously quran also is uh, just um, being in your shelf you are just re reading um i know i'm not judging you all but uh, you have kept that in the shelf you'll just read a, a surah that is surah yasin uh, you'll think okay reading surah yasin in the future and just reading a page is enough no does that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us in the quran no do you really understand uh, every day you read five you res, uh, rec recite this uh, surah al-fatiha seven times or seven repeat often repeated ayahs in the in your prayers do you really understand the meaning of these ayahs see where do you stand when you uh, when you prepare for an exam when you have to give an exam tomorrow you study the subject very deeply then why not quran why not quran see we have to see we have to um my brothers and sisters look upon um uh, our intentions our niya uh, the way of approach how we approach the quran how we have to connect to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we will we can build this relationship so here i'm not here to give you a lot of information uh even though we'll go through uh, lots of information obviously tafsir is a very deep concept these classes are um a very deep, have a deep uh, meaning that is tafsir but um i need you to have all a right kind of attitude that in my heart when i approach this quran when i when i read this quran as if i am conversing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to me i want you to understand what when you go to a french country you'll be like when people will be like um to tapil you'll be like well sorry what did you say uh i'll say mm, be like, sorry mariam i don't know i don't get you uh then you move forward you'll be like can you please translate it to me so the words go beyond your mind like you know the right right so uh, okay so you don't understand the person what uh, he or she is trying to say but, so in order to understand that you have to learn uh why we cannot put efforts to learn arabic and to so that we can understand the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why we cannot give 10 to 15 or 30 minutes here i'm taking this session only twice two days a week two days isn't 40 minute session enough for you 
just to give time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 40 minutes, is that a lot for you? To join this session and just give time and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to us and asking from us. So that's what we have to think. So here I would like to mention that Allah himself says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّهُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَخْفَالُهَا Akhfaluha. Don't they contemplate deeply over the Quran or their hearts something that have their own loss on them? See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reflecting upon the side. What does that mean? The seer, I believe, uh, it gives you ill, but the dabur is something which unlocks the heart through different goals. The seer will expand and, and uh, your knowledge, understand, uh, uh, will improve your knowledge or understanding skills through different concepts and help you reach in your depth of knowledge but when tadabur is missing from the heart um, when tadabur is missing the doors are is locked that's where that's uh, the purpose of reading quran is lost that's that's the purpose of re, uh, uh, conversing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having a connection, building a connection, a spiritual growth, a personal growth with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's where it ends. So, <clears throat> that's why here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in several ayahs, he gave an example of people that came before, the people who came before, I believe they had a lot of knowledge, even knowledge more than us, because they uh, uh, they used to sit with Sahaba, they used to connect, they used to uh, converse with the, uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They used to take uh, his lessons from him. But what they uh, but what they used to do? Well, they had a lot of knowledge. They had proper knowledge. They had a book of guidance. But what Allah said, فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their heart became hard. Even though in other places it mentioned that Mim ma even after they understood it, the heart became hard. The heart became hard even after they understood it. Because in our understanding, in our case, we know that Quran, that tafsir is the question of uh, uh, knowledge, ilm. Understanding the Quran is tafsir. And but when the tadabu is where when you unlock your heart in order to understand the seer. when you don't unlock your heart, how will you praise the beauty, the create creator's creation? Subhanallah. That's why it's very important for us to focus on it, to have it, to to you know uh, to deeply reflect upon it. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept our intentions and reward us the best in the hereafter. Uh, so my part of usul tadabbur is when I start studying any surah, I assume that I know nothing. Yeah, I know nothing. I am zero. I'm not a person of knowledge. I do not know nothing. I do not know. I'm just like you sitting behind the camera. Behind the camera, I know nothing. Just came here to take what lesson should I get take today from this ayah here. That's the main approach we should have. That's the main intention we should take. So here... <clears throat> As we all know that, uh, as uh, always I mentioned that uh, Quran has surah and these are not like chapters. For example, in school when you study a chapter 1, in order to understand chapter 2, you have to study chapter 1, uh, right? Otherwise, you will stay blank in the class. You, do, you won't understand the concept. So when you go in the class uh, on day 2, you'll be like, okay, what's going on? Uh, in the class, you'll be you'll you'll face a squirrel moment, right? Squirrel moment, you'll be like, um, you'll be physically present in the class, but you'll stare at the squirrel outside the window and just or see your book the teacher having in their hand or the blackboard or whatever stuff the presentation, and you'll just sit idle. No, that's not the purpose. But Subhanallah, in the Quran each chapter wherever you pick any chapter it's not like you have to read that chapter in order to understand the particular chapter so chapter uh that's why i don't call it a chapter surah is something different that's a very uh, deep concept uh, inshallah we'll take that in next in next se session so what does understanding and i am means and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger, indeed Allah has achieved a great. 
indeed achieved a great achievement. This is Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 71. The meaning of this ayah is the one who obeys Allah and his messengers. A messenger uh, deserves a great success in the world and the hereafter. Subhanallah. So, inshallah, we'll take this um, uh, concept in the next session as well because it's been already 45 minutes uh, since we have started the class. And um, inshallah, as we all know that uh, uh, understanding why Quran is necessary as um, it holds immense significance uh, for uh, Muslims as well and non-Muslims, it opens the door for them, the, a book of guidance. That's why it's a book of guidance. It, uh, its verses contain divine guidance, a wisdom, a source of inspiration uh, for countless individuals. It's, open, it's a book for everyone, not for especially Muslims. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have invited, that's us who have to contemplate that's where we have to bring the double in our um in our hearts so that we can understand the what Allah is trying to say in the quran we have to come with a neutral mindset in the class and just think about what uh and and take the lesson from the class from the ayah from the verse what we are uh what we have to take it today however understanding quranic context is not a straightforward task it requires obviously a thoughtful and careful approach may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me if i have said something wrong because it's a very uh deep uh it's a, a this is the book of Allah and uh, I really feel so, so, so nervous before starting the class uh, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for me so that I can convey the message uh, in appropriate way. So, inshallah, this is the end of the session. Today's session we have ended. Uh, and uh, uh, jazakallah khair for joining this session. And subhanallah, uh, as I said, this was a session of, will be a session of 90 minutes. But we have to read it in 46 minutes. Wow, mashallah. So, inshallah, tomorrow's uh, next session will be tadabbur on surah al-fatiha and inshallah we'll begin this uh, uh, next in the next session uh, amin ya rabbal amin uh, <coughs> assalamu alaikum everyone اللهم إنا نستعينك ونستغفرك ونبيك ونتوكل عليك ونثني عليك الخير ونشكرك لا نكفرك ونقلام ونفرك من يجرب اللهم إياك نعبدك